Wow, so I had a speech, but I'm just going to leave that on the, on the table. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Make, make our, our brother um, feel good. Judge Mathis, thank you for your moral clarity. I'd be remiss if I did not you know, thank you know, the fine workers that are here today that are protected by Unite Here. So thank you to all of the workers that are here today. And to um, all of my colleagues, the vice mayor was here, uh, and all of the city council members that are here. Cook County Board President Tony Prankwinkle uh, was here. Let's acknowledge her and thank her for her leadership. Uh, our state's attorney, Kim Fox, Kwame Raul, our attorney general, our secretary of state, um, Alexi Janulius uh, was, was here as well. It's all of our uh, county commissioners and our state reps and state senators, all of our business leaders, our community organizations, I'm grateful for the labor leaders that are here, Bob Ryder, CFL, of course you all know Greg Kelly, the finest, the finest, the finest looking labor leader in the history of the world. Thank you. Yeah, we got the vice mayor wearing ascots now to try to look like Greg Kelly. Stacey Davis Gates, president of Chicago Teachers Union, thank you for your leadership. My pastor emeritus is here, Coach Wayne Gordon, thank you, and Ann for your leadership, and of course my new pastors. Uh, the Brooks, thank you so much to my Lawndale community. And of course, I'm not here today um, in this position without the, the leadership of, of Reverend Jackson. Thank you so much, man. You're so smooth and so courageous. You know, Reverend Jackson said to me some time ago when he first met me when I was organizing, he said, if you ever just find a barber, you might become mayor of Chicago one day. So. <laughs> Now I get two haircuts a week, Reverend. Thank you very much. <laughs> the first black first lady in the history of the world, you all. Stacy Nicole Rencher Johnson, I love you. Thank you. We were getting up this morning and the snow was coming down. And my wife, in the true Chicago fashion, just started putting out boots and coats and stuff. It never even dawned on her that the kids would be home. This is Chicago, you all. We don't take days off. We just get stronger. Congratulations to you all. Um, but really, uh, thank you, Val, for your, for your efforts and your leadership and to the entire staff, the city of Chicago, that made this event remarkable. I'll just close with this. You know, there's so much to be said about this particular moment that we're in right now. But I'm so grateful that we have, have had a prophetic voice and Dr. Keene, who not just saw this moment coming, but he also saw the solution for the moment that was coming. You know, it's one thing to dream of, of, of possibilities. It's another thing when you are committed to administering the very solutions that can transform not just black America, but that can transform the world. And all the faith leaders that are here today, the interfaith effort to bring Chicago together, to build a better, stronger, safer Chicago, it's not just possible, but it's happening. And here's how it happened for me. So there was a West Side teacher by the name of Al Raby who was leading this city in a variety of ways. And he invited Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to the city of Chicago to confront the crisis of housing. And with that invitation, when Dr. King showed up in the city of Chicago, he saw the challenges, but he saw the possibilities and he had a very prophetic, strong pronouncement. And he said, if we can figure it out in Chicago, we can do it anywhere in the world. In the very room that I now occupy, I think it's just prophetic, but it's also divine, that a high school history teacher invited one of the greatest humanitarians to ever walk the planet Earth to the fifth floor. And now the fifth floor is occupied by a high school teacher raising a family on the west side of Chicago. As Gator Bradley would say, you better listen. <laughs> And so the very elevators that I would block and took an arrest at City Hall, those elevators are now opened up to grassroots organizations that have been kept out of government for ages. That the election of this last year, on the very day that Dr. King was assassinated, if anybody is doubting who and why I'm here, you don't have to anymore. For those who, of you who are still worried of whether or not we're gonna bring people together, you don't have to worry. You know why? Because it's through the lens of black liberation that all of us exist today. 
It really is. And so from the bottom of my heart, this first of the next 23 MLK days that I will celebrate as mayor of the city of Chicago. <laughs> I'm so grateful. And here's what it started out with. You know, we passed paid time off on the greatest, most expansive paid leave ordinances in the entire country. 10 days. We abolished the sub-minimum wage uh, um, practice in this, in this city, which has its history in slavery. We passed treatment, not trauma, creating an alternative response to 911. And remember those health clinics that were closed two administrations ago? I'm going to open up two of them in this year's budget. A quarter of a billion dollars my administration has committed to deal with the unhoused. One hundred million dollars of investment, violence prevention. We stood up an entire office with the leadership of the Black Caucus, an office for reentry. We reinstituted the Department of the Environment. I can keep going, but the program is over. But what I will say this, my administration isn't. So God bless you all. Happy Keen Day, and God bless the greatest freaking city in the world, the city of Chicago.